So in a prior video, we introduced the challenge to muscle origin and insertion. And then I offered several qualities of relationship of muscle tissue to other tissues in the body. I just made a list of them. Oh, here's the list. So muscle tissue relationships, right? Muscle to bone, we identified that. Muscle fibers going directly into the bone. Muscle fibers petering out into a fibrous tendon and the tendon relating directly to the bone. Muscle fiber in relationship to slippy membranous perifascia, that's what the P is for, so muscle fiber via perifascia relating to muscle or bone. Then we had muscle relating not to a slippery membrane but to a fiber septum, muscle to septum, and then relating to bone or muscle. And then finally, muscle having its viscera, so it's kind of a neurovascular root that also is an attachment of the muscle. So I thought it would be good to have an example because I've actually dissected the entire body to discover all of the relationships of muscle tissue in these categories. So let's start with a famous muscle, the pec major. So pectoralis major means big chest muscle. This is it right here. So big chest muscle. Um, that's what the Latin speakers said, literally, uh, pectoralis major. So major is big, pectoralis is chest, so the big muscle of the chest is an easy example and everybody knows a little bit about it, you know, your pec major. So I need more board space to draw a picture. Okay, so having reviewed the uh, different muscle tissue relationships, let's do an example with the pec major. I'll draw it. Okay, so what do we got here? Uh, we, got, uh, we got a collarbone. We've got a collarbone, we have some, we have the sternum, we've got uh, shoulders and an arm and fingers, shoulder, I don't really need the fingers, but it looks better. And then we have some ribs here. Now I'm going to leave the ribs off on this side so we can just draw the pec major, it'll be more clear. So here come the fibers of the pec major going from where? From the collarbone, the clavicle that is, to the arm. And then we have fibers going also from the sternum to the arm and then kind of just wandering out on the ribcage. So we have lots of muscle fibers here. Now what are their relationships? Number one, muscle tissue directly to bone. We see that here, example number one, and here, example number one. So the muscle fibers of pec major root directly into the bone. Well, there's also a tendon on the pec major right over here. So look at that. So the muscle fiber doesn't go directly to the arm, to the humerus. It goes via a fibrous tendon. So that's sort of type two in our list of muscle tissue relationships, qualities, and how they relate to other tissues. What about type three, muscle to perifascia? Do we see an example of that here? Absolutely, because once it's kind of connected here and here and here, all underneath the pec major, for the most part, we have a membrane that allows the muscle fibers to contract and shear over the rib cage. So perifascia underneath, right? And also we have pec minor underneath, that would be a more elaborate drawing, but the pec major relates to the pec minor via perifascia. So muscle to muscle via perifascia, muscle tissue to the rib cage via perifascia. So there's type three. What about type four? What was that? The viscera. So the viscera, meaning the guts, the vein and the artery and, and the nerve of the uh, pec major underneath the muscle, come through branching off of other more major structures here. So we have the visceral root. If I were to cut the muscle relationship to the bone and to the perifascia and to the tendon over here, it would still be hanging on your body because it would be connected via its viscera. But wait folks, that's not all. The pec major also has a long border here so that it's kind of webbed. And that is a fibrous fascial relationship to the fleece of the superficial fascia. So we have another relationship here. It's not quite a septum, but again, this is a model. 
Uh, and basically what I'm trying to do is give you a thorough accounting of the relationship of the muscle tissue. And so to be thorough, we'll say we have kind of a fibrous relationship that's not quite a septum. So here we go. Oh, number four. They're telling me, don't forget the four, right? <laughs> so there's number four. And this is sort of five in parentheses because it's not a septal relationship, but it is a fibrous, a more fibrous relationship than perifascia. So there you have it. Um, the muscle tissue relationships of the pec major. And I think that if you account for this, um, you'll, have a, you'll have a completely different way of touching people, a more sophisticated touch, because you could just be mashing around on a pec, or you could be very specific. You could go to the places where the pec relates to the bone, where it relates via perifascia, where it relates via tendon, where it relates via, relates via its viscera, where it relates via more dense fascia. And in having that sort of, um, inventory of qualities of relationship, you'll be a much more um, fancy schmancy uh, touch therapist than you might have been before. So we've covered the pec major and all of its relationships. On my website, gilhadley.com, I cover every other muscle in the body. I hope you enjoyed this video and you can go there if you want to have a more in-depth experience of your studies of integral anatomy. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your watching. Thanks for studying with me. If you'd like to learn more, visit me at gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.